be. Yeah. Okay, uh, my name is Tatiana Krupenia, and I'm a CEO of DBiver, the universal database management tool. And uh, today I am interviewing David Gummer, a CPO and one of the leading solution providers of Complaint Database DevOps, Redgate Software. So David is an entrepreneur product leader with 25, more than 25 years of experience in different kind of technology sectors. And today, I'll be asking him about a database team uh, and how database team can overcome the complexity of managing uh, multiple databases. Because, you know, the Beaver support like 100 databases and it's like a world where we live right now. So welcome, David. And I wanted to start uh, asking what does mean when you're talking about the database being a bottleneck uh, to productivity? Thanks, Tatiana. So I think there's there's probably three um, key factors I would I would talk about here: data persistence and, and database complexity is the first one. Team processes is the second one, and and test data is the the third one. So if I if I unpack those a little bit, you know, obviously database changes can't simply be overwritten if we want to preserve data integrity. So we have to we have to care about and be alive to the risk of of data loss. But that's obviously more challenging in in larger organizations who are often working with large complex databases, typically across multiple database platforms, and often where they'll have some, some technical debt. So for example, we find lots of organizations have databases that contain invalid objects, which means unfortunately that database can't be easily recreated from version controlled scripts, which in turn means the database can't be easily integrated into agile processes. And it kind of creates an interest charge that's payable on the technical debt. So that's the, the first factor. The second one's really around team processes and the friction that the database can throw into the mix, particularly at scale. So there's there's often a knowledge gap or a kind of understanding gap perhaps between different teams around their goals and challenges and constraints during the, the you know the software de delivery life cycle. So you know app dev teams are often focused on releasing agile changes to meet business needs with their application with data teams much more focused on protecting the database and the data that they're responsible for. So there can be a bit of a lack of training skills and mutual understanding across the areas that can lead to misalignment. And a lack of visibility between those groups can um, of changes can kind of reinforce that gap. So that's the, the second factor. And then the, the, the third one I wanted to talk about was really test data. So the quality and the management of, of test data. Because if, if dev teams don't have quick and easy access to high quality test data, it just slows the workflow and, and raises the risk of issues at deployment time. And obviously data sensitivity is a, is a factor as well. So that, that test data needs to be compliant as well as being you know, quickly and easily accessible. And what's more, the, the task of setting up your know, database test is actually pretty challenging and, and time consuming. So shift left testing is, is the way to, uh, to resolve that. So those are the three factors that I'd highlight, Tatiana. Oh, it uh, sounds really familiar, you know, and <laughs> what can you gain if this is removed? Um, I think our customers tend to highlight three core areas, right? So the, the first is around time to market. So supporting the organization's competitive position by, you know, by you know, getting to market more quickly and accelerating their delivery. The second one is around higher satisfaction, both from customers, but also from teams that, that kind of stems from you know, delivering quicker and more reliable releases. So clearly that's that's great from a customer's perspective because they're getting more value and they're getting it sooner, but it's also very you know, mo motivating and kind of fulfilling for the teams who are working on those things that they can see the impact they're making for customers and, and for the business. And then the third, third strand is really around efficiency savings and, and revenue gains. So freeing up teams from a lot of manual work means there's, you know, there's much more opportunity to add value in innovation, as well as greater operational efficiency. So those are the, the three factors that, that tend to come up a lot um, you know, in our conversations with customers. But is there a cultural aspect to consider? What do you think? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think it, it, it takes a kind of combination of people and process and technology to, to successfully make any kind of transformational change. And I would put people at the top of that list. It's the, the most important of the three. So, so yeah, culture is massively important. Um, so I talked a bit already about the, the kind of tension in many organizations between the you know, kind of dev teams and, and ops teams um, and cultural changes to, you know, to, to address that is a real key part of successfully adopting DevOps. So bringing some alignment through shared objectives that are focused on 
aligning everyone's outcome to delivering value to the customer, it's massively important. You know, yes, of course, processes and technology can, you know, can enable a variety of benefits, you know, introduce more automation, reduce human error, increase reliability, shift that testing, find their issues sooner, you know, release small changes more frequently, all of that kind of good stuff. But DevOps just doesn't work if um, and organizations don't get the benefits without the right culture. So yeah, culture is absolutely critical. Yeah, I agree. So I also wanted to uh, talk about the challenges that database professionals face when working across database. I mean, what is behind the growth in these uh, database variations? Um, I think you you alluded to it in the introduction, right? But the the story of the database market is really a story of kind of proliferation. So we've gone from the you know the world his, historically of kind of big monolithic databases, primarily in SQL Server, or Oracle, to today's situation where there's just huge diversity in the in the databases available. So I think you know, DB Engines is now checking it's almost 400 database types. So the the kind of growing variation in what's used is really down to that kind of increased choice and people you know, selecting the best database for the job. But of course, what it means is most people are therefore working across multiple databases. So developers are doing that because the majority of enterprises are doing that. So most enterprises, you know, the, the vast majority of surveys show, you know, um, it's almost four in five are working with a you know a range of databases in their stack, and it's it, and it tends to be a kind of um, an increasingly growing number. So yeah, there's a there's a huge level of growth, which is perhaps bringing a, a little bit more complexity. Yeah, it's true, but obviously tech is constantly evolving backdrop. So is that all that is changing? Uh, <laughs> no, absolutely not. So there's in addition to the the kind of growth in the range of databases that are in use. I guess that's compounded by you know, changes in the mix of where those databases are hosted. So the, the mix between on-prem to cloud to, to hybrid, um, changes in the mix of operating systems that the developers and teams are using and changes in the tooling. I mean, in, in today's world, there's just a far wider range, you know, much bigger choice of tools available to, to support through the, the SDLC. So yeah, there's, there's change at pretty much every level of the stack these days. Okay, and what's the impact of that? Um, I guess first and foremost, it, it means it, it brings increasing complexity and increasing kind of velocity of change. So that that creates both opportunities, but also kind of presents some challenges for for organizations and for for individuals, um, you know, whether it's kind of barriers to productivity or training issues or potential issues around kind of audit and compliance or greater risk of you know, failures or security issues. So to me, all of that's really a kind of key driver for for automation, trying to find ways to increase simplicity for you know for knowledge workers to help people to kind of navigate that complexity and and do it efficiently, reduce the risk of manual errors. So this really kind of is crying out for for tools that can help people you know tackle those challenges and support their organization to work in the way that they want to, the way that kind of fits their culture and and fits their processes. So I guess I'll, as I said before, right. You know, people process technology we need all three to work together to you know, to really succeed with um, you know, with devops and with digital transformations but the interesting point was about the tools what should people be thinking about when considering the tools that can help um i think it's hugely important to consider the kind of end-to-end -end story so how complete are the tools that you're looking at how well do they fit together? You know, does the tool chain that you're building support your people working efficiently and effectively? To get full value from, from DevOps, I think it's hugely important to really think about the database. You know, Gartner described it as the, the thorny part of DevOps. Um, so really important to take an end-to-end -end perspective here and think about you know, tooling across not just continuous database delivery, but also test data management. And Redgate supports customers to take that kind of joined up approach with an end-to-end -end solution, enabling them to deliver business value faster through accelerating software delivery, supporting team collaboration, and improving quality and security. So um, those are the kind of key factors I would try and keep in mind when thinking about tooling. Oh, actually, as I said, it's really close to us, like this, all of this stuff about efficiency, about team collaboration, we really share these ideas. And I'm a bit uh, embarrassed to ask this question, but I have to, that, you know, sometimes database professionals can face the issue of senior management not taking the database seriously. 
it sounds strange, but it's like the reality where we live. So what would you say people can arm themselves with so that the CEO, CIO take notice? I think it's a great question because you're, you're right. That's a, it's a constant problem of you know, having messaging which lands with and resonates and works with you know, folks who are working with tools day to day, but also up the, you know, the kind of management chain and, and into the C-suite. Um, I think the, the biggest part of the recipe is talking to the pain points and the agenda you know, of those exec level audiences, which, which is really all about what's going to be the impact on business performance. And I think there are some real you know, significant quantifiable benefits that can come, whether it's from protecting revenue from downtime or reducing the cost from, you know, from failed changes, reducing the amount of time that's spent on manual tasks. Um, you know, for a typical enterprise, those factors alone can generate more than $5 million a year of, of cost savings. And beyond that, you know, clearly there are, there are other arguments that are a bit more variable from one industry to another around you know, the, the impact on your com competitive position from accelerating time to market. And the value of that can vary quite a lot between organizations. And there's also the reduction in risk from supporting compliance and protecting sensitive data through your, your SDLC. And so to me, there's, there's a com compelling ROI and there are some quite compelling messages in there that, you know, that really are on point for C-level stakeholders to respond to. <laughs> Thank you so much, actually. I believe that people just need to write down everything that you <laughs> answered in the last question and use it next time. <laughs> but uh, anyway, thank you very much for your time, David. It's been a pleasure talking to you today and have a very great everything related to Redgate and your life. Thank you. Thanks, Tatiana. My pleasure.